go. Hi everyone, my name is Aurelia Gomez. I'm the Deputy Director at the Museum of International Folk Art and I'm a past president of the New Mexico uh, Art Education Association. So I'm super happy to be here. I'm emceeing a presentation on the online educational resources that the New Mexico Department of Cultural Affairs has to offer. We are an amazing department. The divisions that are represented today are listed here. We have a great mission statement that I think a lot of you will be able to relate to. If you go to New Mexico Department of Cultural Affairs on the web, you will see a bunch of images that are related to each of our sites. And if you explore this website, you will continue, you can find a really cool program at DCA educates at DCA educates at nmculture.org and there's a program called invite a DCA educator. You can explore this site, select a site you want to work with and work with an educator there to tailor a presentation to your classroom and your classroom needs. So I'm going to turn it over to these really talented educators that we have here. And the first one is Kemily Gomez from the Museum of International Folk Art. So take it away, Kemily. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Kemily Gomez, and I am the bilingual educator at the Museum of International Folk Art. Our museum is located in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and is one of the few museums in the United States dedicated to folk art from around the world and the Museum of International Folk Art expands the understanding of folk art and encourages dialogue about traditions, culture, cultural identity, community, and aesthetics. While we're living in a very uh, unprecedented time and everything's very virtual, we have uh, expanded our efforts to uh, expand all our digital content. And today I'm here to present all the different resources that we have available for you. Uh, next slide. So currently we have a, an extensive amount of lesson plans. All of these lesson plans are available on our website. These lesson plans are about folk art uh, projects and these lesson plans you can also find them in English and Spanish. Um, these lesson plans are also um, aligned with the national visual arts uh, standards, but can also be extended or expanded into different subjects. Um, I can mention these are completely free on our website and they're downloadable. Another project that we have initiated is a Folk Art for You. This project is about creating different activities that are simple to do at home. They're sort of like a DIY project that you can do or use with your students or share with parents at your school. Uh, these activities are also bilingual. They include English and Spanish text. And they're also available on our website and free to download. Um, and also one of the great things about these activities is that they include step-by-step -step instructions and images for any kind of learners. Um, next slide. Another wonderful thing that we have available in our, our website uh, and that you can find very useful for your students as virtual exhibits. We have a range of uh, past and current exhibits available. Some of them are more like a tour, uh, like a virtual tour or a 3D uh, virtual exhibition. Uh, these are really wonderful and dynamic to explore and sort of dive in into art exhibitions. So I, I highly encourage you to explore our website for all of these uh, wonderful exhibits that we have available. Uh, another thing that we have available, we earlier this year, we launched our first uh, YouTube channel uh, where we offer different artists interviews, uh, short documentaries, Japanese storytelling, and a lot of wonderful videos um, about students who have transformed trash and recycled materials into works of art. And you'll find a lot of uh, new content on that channel. Um, so please check it out. And also please, uh, I encourage you to follow us on our social media platforms like Facebook or Instagram for any updates on virtual uh, programming, such as you know, lectures, concerts, and family programs. Uh, next slide. 
Uh, so every year our museum offers uh, like a professional development opportunity for teachers. And this year is not the exception, although it's not gonna be in person, it's gonna be virtual. And we're offering a series of uh, workshops, folk art workshops that will focus on different themes. And these um, programs will be um, hosted through Zoom. Uh, and the spaces are limited. So I highly encourage you if you're interested, please um, register ahead and find more information on our website. Um, this, the upcoming workshop that we have is gonna be this coming week, October 29, uh, 4 p.m. So I please encourage you to join us for this wonderful workshop that we have lined up for you. And I hope all of these resources that I mentioned to you are helpful and useful. And please, if you have any other questions, then just feel free to reach out. Like I said, my name is Kamali Gomez and uh, just check out our website. Thank you. Thanks, Kemily. Next up is Jamie Brytowski from our Wonders on Wheels mobile program. So take it away, Jamie. Hi, everybody. Wonders on Wheels uh, used to be rolling to all 33 counties, but then there was the COVID lockdown and we just made the jump to virtual. So we still prioritize rural and tribal areas, but we visit everywhere and we partner with one of the eight state museums each year and this year our partner is the Museum of International Folk Art. Our exhibit is called Musica Buena, Celebrating Music in New Mexico. We offer a variety of programs. We offer live presentations with your classroom or group. We work with teachers, librarians, group leaders, event planners, so don't be shy if you don't have a classroom. There's, uh, we still show up at lots of events like that. We're on YouTube. We have videos, some how to make it yourself, some uh, how to uh, move and dance and make music yourself uh, that we that uh, Moifa also has, the Museum of International Folk Art has, and we have um, presentations on Facebook, and that would be a good place to see what we're all about. Check out our Facebook page and you can play some of our uh, long-term presentations and see if that's going to work for you. We also have make it yourself activities either live or pre-recorded for you to go at your own pace at your own time. Next slide please. Thank you. We've collaborated with and made custom presentations for all kinds of entities. So if you have a classroom, fantastic. We can visit your classroom. Or if you're a private museum, we worked with Western Heritage Museum and Lee County Cowboy Hall of Fame in Hobbs. Uh, there's an aspect of our exhibit that talks about cowboy music. We've worked, we're working with Bosque del Apache National Wildlife Refuge. They have a Festival of the Cranes event that's virtual this year. We're gonna make a do-it-yourself straw oboe that sounds like a bird call. So we're gonna make all kinds of music there. We've worked with Taylor Messia Historic Site. They had an event in Messia near Las Cruces. We did a, a I would call it an adult uh, presentation. A lot of docents were in attendance. It was really, really cool. Uh, we work with classroom teachers, librarians, boys and girls club. We look forward to working with senior centers and teacher conferences and other conferences. Uh, like this one. These pictures are about uh, make it yourself on the right. We have a shaker maker YouTube and we sent around some kits which we're still able to do with a lot of uh, preparation. That middle picture are some instruments that uh, kids get a chance to hear and uh, that's the way they can experience it through Zoom these days but they're available for our live and class presentations. And the picture on the left are some girls uh, relating to wearables about all kinds of special uh, traditional music in New Mexico. Next slide, please. For areas without internet access, we developed some kits and we're partnering with the Museum of International Folk Art to, to produce and distribute recordings of Los Matachines, Los Comanches, Las Posadas, and Darlos Diaz. And when we have that uh, recording. It'll either be on DVD or on a flash drive. We're going to distribute it to libraries around the state and other institutions around the state. So that might be something that uh, interests you. Um, we have co-premiered music conference concerts with Museum of International Folk Art and we've co-premiered things with librarians and libraries around the state. So 
uh, it's pretty dynamic. It's hard to be off our tires, but there we are on the net doing all kinds of things. Um, and if this looks like a topic, music and cultural events, if this looks like a topic that your class or your group is interested in, we can uh, collaborate on a custom presentation that specifically hits state standards and curriculum or special topics that we can manage to relate to our exhibit. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Jamie. Next up, we have Michael Sanchez from the New Mexico Museum of Natural History and Science. Take it away, Michael. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the New Mexico Museum of Natural History and Science. Uh, my name is Mike Sanchez. I am an educator here, and I've been working in the Education Department collection for quite a long time. And we have an enormous collection and I would like to take you with a little tour. So hopefully uh, you'll be able to see, uh, can you, are you able to see what the collection looks like? Are you able to get that to happen there? Um, so we can see it, your background. You can see, you can see the background. Wonderful. Okay. So our education department, uh, collection is quite extensive and we have done quite a bit to try to um, not only encourage science teachers to use our collection but also uh, educators of every every kind and artists certainly use our collection quite extensively we have a very large collection of things like minerals uh, we have a large collection of fossils of plants of skulls you can see over here there's some skulls right down in there. Um, all of them are available to teachers. Um, we have had teachers who have borrowed everything from the bizarre all the way to the absolutely beautiful. So next slide, please. Um, we have had a, a teacher who was requesting spirals. So we put together a collection of things that were spiraled. Uh, we had another teacher who was very interested in having specimens that were only monochromatic. And so what we did is we pulled together specimens that had absolutely no colors so that the students could strictly, strictly concentrate on, on textures. And uh, they were very, very, the teacher was very happy with that. Um, unfortunately, due to COVID, we cannot directly loan the specimens. That said, we are more than willing to photograph specimens and then make them available to teachers. Uh, what we would like you to do is dream it up and we are more than happy to pull specimens together and do something for you. Um, as I said, we've done everything from radial symmetry to colors to you name it, we can do it. And with an extensive collection to, to back it up. So um, just real quickly, you can see here, we have everything from fossils. And hopefully over here, you can see, we have a number of insects. If you've always wanted to do insects, there's that. Um, in addition, we have on our website, next, web, next uh, slide, please. We have online, quite a few online resources, and we run everything from at home, uh, school at home, science at home programs, coloring sheets that are available that show everything from uh, symmetry to perspective to all different ways of using those particular materials. Uh, so please visit us at our website, explore, and if you need to contact someone, we have contact information right there. You can see uh, my name again is Mike Sanchez. And feel free to contact us and we will certainly work with you to pull together uh, whatever it would be that you would like to see us do for you. So thank you very much. Hey, thanks, Michael. So next up, we have Chris Nail from the New Mexico Museum of Art. So take it away, Chris. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Chris Nail, part of the education team at the New Mexico Museum of Art. Uh, we've been New Mexico's art museum since 1917. And since the beginning, we've thought of ourselves as the region's museum for contemporary art. 
But by approaching art that way, our collection has become both historic and contemporary, covering the 20th century and a little before, all the way up through the present. Uh, we show the work of New Mexican and Southwest artists to the world while bringing national and international exhibitions to the people of our state. Uh, like every other DCA institution, we have way more to offer than we can squeeze, squeeze into a few minutes, so we decided to pick a few of our favorites to share with you. Um, if I get the next slide. Whoop. Whoop. There we go. All right, so first up are guided virtual tours. Um, so museum field trips are a great way for students to learn about and experience a wide range of topics, but they aren't always feasible, as we know, due to distance, scheduling, bus funds, or a global health crisis. Um, Museum of Art is now offering virtual guided tours of our museum and exhibitions. Uh, so they'll be accessible regardless of where your classroom may be or what's going on in the world. These tours are generally led by one of our outstanding team of docents, but specialized tours with a member of our education staff are also available. Um, tours are generally centered on the themes present in our exhibitions, but more specialized tours can be requested. Uh, just as an example, if the history of architecture in New Mexico is of interest and of use for your class, our museum is often credited with popularizing Pueblo Revival or Santa Fe style architecture, so we can work with you on that. Um, of course, tours for school groups, uh, virtual or in person down the road, are always free and we're happy to customize something to fit the needs of your class, which goes for pretty much everything that we do. If I can get the next slide. Okay, this is one of my personal favorites because I get to run this one. Uh, smarter smartphone photography. Uh, historically, the museum hasn't only shown art, we've encouraged its creation, but it's been a long time since we've been able to set up artists with studio space in the basement. Uh, our Smarter Smartphone Photography class doesn't require a studio space. It can be adjusted for middle school students all the way up through adult learners. And it's designed around the most common way that people make photographs today. These things that we all seem to carry around in our pockets. Um, the class covers subjects such as basic composition, using light, context for photographs, how to read an image, and basic mobile editing. Uh, when we've offered this class in person, it generally takes a few hours, but we're now offering a more condensed one hour online class, or we're happy to conduct a more extensive course over multiple virtual visits. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, here's where I try to cram everything in at the end. Um, so online resources. Um, let's see, I should probably first say that if there's something, um, if you have something in mind that I don't mention today or that isn't on the invited DCA educator site, which everyone should definitely check out, um, contact us. We'll be happy to develop something with you. We love working with people. Um, so first up, uh, education activities and resources that are available on our website. Uh, this collection of activities and information is generally geared more towards families and children, but there's some good classroom resources in there. Um, there are exhibition and artist specific resources here, as well as resources such as our color and line activities that cover some of the basic elements of art. Uh, included in with these resources are our archives and our library, um, which are fantastic resources that we would love to see used by more schools. Um, numerous finding aids are available online and our librarian is available via phone and email to help with research projects. Anytime we get a group of middle school students in because they need help working with something in particular, Sophie goes crazy. It's, it's really fun. Um, Let's see, in the middle there is our uh, SAM, or our Searchable Art Museum. We also have a preparator named SAM. It gets a little confusing in the office sometimes. Um, SAM is a great resource for learning about the art and artists in our collection. There are currently over 3,000 entries from our collection of over 20,000 works of art, and we're adding more all the time. So why aren't all 20,000 objects available? Well, the database from 1917 takes a little while to transfer over and we wanna make sure we get it right. So we're doing it carefully. Um, and lastly, uh, our YouTube channel. We've been putting a lot more effort into our video resources on our YouTube channel uh, in the last year. Um, here you can find artist interviews, gallery talks, um, history and cultural lectures, um, even performances by the Gustav Bauman marionettes. So anyone who might be in the Santa Fe area, we bring them out uh, around the holidays every year. There's a play. It's kind of a great tradition. I think they're fantastic. So you can see that. Uh, so we're excited to work with all of you virtually at any time and hopefully in person down the road. So thanks a bunch. Thank you so much, Chris. Next up is the Hispa National Hispanic Cultural Center and Elena Baca. Take it away, Elena. Hello, everybody. Um, 
I'm Elena, and I am one of the staff members at the um, National Hispanic Cultural Center. We are located in the historic Borellis neighborhood in Albuquerque. Um, the National Hispanic Cultural Center is a little bit unique because we have some different program areas that I'll talk to you about, but we're also a campus of buildings. Um, and so this is just a couple of views of, we have, um, let's see, in the bottom is our performing arts area. We have um, some multiple public art pieces that are located on our campus. And we have a Torion with a big, um, um, oh my gosh, I'm spacing out, Frederico Vigil, who also did a piece at the Museum of Art in Santa Fe, has done this massive um, concave fresco. Uh, next slide. Um, so at the Hispanic Cultural Center, we have a history and literary arts program that also houses our library and our genealogy center. And that is the top picture. Um, that building is a historic WPA building that was formerly an elementary school. Um, and it was part of the neighborhood. Um, it's, it's really kind of a magical building um, because we still get elderly people who who come and visit our campus who went to school there. Um, and so people can come and they can do genealogical research or check out our library. Um, they also do um, exhibits related to um, historic themes and to the Hispanic Cultural Center. Um, we have a performing arts center that um, runs three different theaters and we work with all types of performing arts. Um, uh, many of the people today who are listening to this probably have been to the Center for Bellas Artes, which is um, a large festival with children performing. Um, we'll be really sad this year um, not to see that happen um, because we love to see our campus filled with hundreds of children. Um, but we do have a film program that um, is continuing in the time of COVID um, through our Performing Arts Center. And then we have our visual arts program, which I'm a part of that staff, and we um, run the art museum, and we also run um, education, school, and community exhibits throughout the year. And we have taken, we're slowly taking those programs virtually. And so most recently we did an exhibit with Albuquerque um, High School um, called Incubation. And so I invite everybody to check that out on our website. Um, next slide. And so what we have to offer for um, schools, teachers, community groups, and people learning from home. Um, our History and Literary Arts Department has a podcast um, that you can check out and find more information on our website. Um, we have, um, our social media has been very active with activities that people can do from home. Um, they can dive in as deep as they want to and make something um, out of recycled materials or re really easily accessible materials. And our most exciting thing that's happening is we are working with um, a group of AmeriCorps Vistas and we have a new learning site that is just going up and um, the URL is at the bottom of the screen. And currently the History and Literary Arts Department's curriculum for the Torion um, has gone live and the visual arts department will be next and then the performing arts department. Um, and so there will be curriculum for families, um, quick activities, as well as more extended um, curriculum that um, meets state standards. Next slide. And so who does this? We have a, a pretty, um, you know, we don't have a large staff, but um, the people that you'd wanna know that can visit your classroom or support you in your um, activities throughout the year um, would be me. I'm Elena Baca, I'm an educator in visual arts and I'm working with Paloma Lopez, who is um, an amazing person who is helping me with curriculum. We have David Torres, who's education program coordinator in performing arts, and he runs the Summer Circo Latino program. Um, we have Cassandra Ostrolo, who's our librarian, and we have um, a new educator on board, um, Roberto, um, and I'm really anxious for everybody to get to meet him soon. He just started this week, so, um, and he is going to be working on curriculum um, pertaining to literary arts. 
So we hope you check out our stuff on our websites and please contact us. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. Next, we have the New Mexico History Museum and Melanie Laborowitz. So take it away, Melanie. Melanie, you have to unmute yourself. Welcome. My name is Melanie Laborowit, a museum educator at the New Mexico History Museum. The New Mexico History Museum offers a wealth of opportunities to art educators and great opportunities to teach across the curriculum. Instead of thinking just about integrating art into STEM, like STEAM, Think even more broadly about STEAM. Throw history into that mix. When we are ready, we will welcome you back into our museum and step into the past, and we'll use our imaginations to learn about life in early New Mexico. We are working on a variety of virtual tours. Until then, we have some available that are available on our website now, and we are adding new materials all the time. You can easily access them at our website at nmhistorymuseum.org. With our new maker initiative, let's go to the next slide. What? With our new maker initiative, Making History, we have developed a host of activities celebrating historic craft and heritage technologies. Our Making History series of monthly projects is now part of a bank of video presentations with complete how-tos for a variety of subjects, also on our website. Everything is free to download, and also we'd like to encourage you to follow us on various social media accounts from our library and the Frey and Helico Chavez Library, the photo archives, and the museum's own Facebook page. We also have a blog, which sometimes has links to special lectures for upper grades, really great topics. At the museum, many remember the remarkable 18th century Segesser hides, but can you make some on your own? Learn about those. Next slide. We can learn about how historic preservation is so important and learn to appreciate the hard work of building with adobe bricks. Look for lesson plans on how to build your own miniature adobera and build those. Connect with photography as an art medium or also just learn to read historical images. Many people don't know, but our photo archives has digitized over 20,000 historical images that you may use in your classroom. Really amazing primary resources. We also, next slide. We also encourage learning about our heritage technologies and crafts on your own. And we could learn to write history historically, making your own feather quills and in ink. Lesson plans for many of these activities are being developed. Our new website has just been revamped and has just gone up and they're being added throughout the year. So continue to look for new activities. Next slide. We have a large bank of lessons on mapping and the Santa Fe Trail. And you may not think that could be connected to your art classrooms, but some of them are really, really fun and very creative. And visual learners like myself <laughs> tend to teach even history that way. We can connect to required geography standards, but also do projects involving making a compass, understanding topography by making three-dimensional paper models and sculptures, or clay maps of New Mexico sharing physical features. Again, everything is free to download on the museum website and the videos are available at any time. Next slide. Finally, there are lots of ways to connect to New Mexico's past with our creative present. 
check out the DC Invite and Educators page. And if you don't see a topic that you are interested in or would like to make a connection to New Mexico history, we are totally open to talking about uh, developing a plan just tailored to your classroom and inviting other members of the museum staff, whether it's in the Palace Press or in our archive or in our curatorial staff or in our preservation staff and making a meaningful presentation for you. So I look forward to hearing from you again, NM History Museum, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Melanie. Next up, we have the Office of Archaeological Studies, and Molly Toll will tell us all about what they have to offer. Take it away, Molly. You might be wondering what archaeology has to do with art, but like history, it connects you with people in other times and places and, um, and their creativity. So what, um, in, in, in the process, archaeology connects across an amazing number of disciplines because we um, use a variety of science disciplines as well as um, uh, paying attention to people's cultural view of their own world. Um, so we, as archaeologists, recognize that art is a part of every culture in everything that they do, whether it's their shelter, um, their food, the objects that they make to use every day, or the things that they make specifically to be something of beauty. Um, so um, let's go to the next slide. Nope. Whoa. So I just want to show you a couple of our um, offerings that really are specifically related to art. Um, we have one called Fantastic Beasts. We have a, an osteology lab that includes tens of thousands of um, reference specimens of bones um, in order to identify the um, remains of people's dinners in their hunting efforts um, at all different parts of New Mexico uh, through the last 20 centuries. Um, and we recognize that those bones are beautiful as well as being a way of um, understanding how an animal is put together and how it's adapted to its environment in New Mexico. So, um, in the um, program that we call Fantastic Beasts, um, kids of all ages at different levels can explore how um, animals that were important to prehistoric inhabitants, how they are adapted to their environment and how they move and what their diet is um, based on their skeletal anatomy, which is the evidence that we have to deal with them. Um, and to make a story of um, the relationship between people and animals in the past. In this project, kids can either create puppets, um, which look a lot like um, uh, the shadow puppets of Bali, um, out of animal skeletal elements, um, or, and, and that requires getting the materials to kids. Um, or they can do through collage, which is a, a version we've developed because it's so easily downloadable and shareable virtually. Um, and all of our lessons include um, writing prompts um, to take kids into um, the world of why animals are built the way they are and what that allows them to do. Let's look at the next slide. We have another program that we started this last summer as part of uh, a summer camp in a box. Since kids couldn't come for summer camp, we could deliver it to them. It's called Making and Breaking Pots and it um, looks at um, the ceramic cultures um, and how they vary uh, really across the world, not just New Mexico. So we look at properties of clay and how that allows um, clay to be fashioned into useful objects 
and fired and become um, permanent so that we have lots and lots of hundreds of thousands of um, fragmentary clay vessels to look at um, from archaeological assemblages. Um, it allows you to look at uh, both contemporary ceramic technologies and how they're connected with traditional ones. Um, we encourage kids to look at vessel form and function um, and to look at how that's varied widely over time and space right into um, a kid's kitchen. Um, and then part of the module is also reconstructing vessels from fragments. We, um, fragments are what archaeologists deal with. How do you um, make a picture of a world and the objects in it from pieces? Um, next slide. So this is our website. On it, you will find um, a broad array of teacher resources, kid resources, um, downloadable activities, also a number of videos that illustrate traditional technologies, um, arrow making, um, uh, ceramic technology, uh, uh, fabric making, uh, yucca cordage, a whole bunch of different um, things that you can um, look at and we are uh, really ready to uh, provide demonstrations with people who have worked with traditional um, technologists and, and really figured out some of these technologies from the ground up um, and uh, can do those in your classroom. So we hope to hear from you. Thank you, Molly. So last but not least, by any stretch, is Patrick Moore, who will talk about the New Mexico historic sites. So take it away, Patrick. Thank you, Aurelia. And uh, great to be here. Certainly hard to come in last after this uh, Titan set of groups. So I'm joining you from beautiful Jemez historic site. Well, at least virtually. Um, and so we're gonna do a quick run around the state of where we're coming. Um, all of our historic sites, and if you go to the next slide that we have across our great state, working from north down to south, our beautiful newest family member, Los Luceros Historic Site. The mountain ones of Los Luceros uh, is connected by Jemez and Coronado, which look at Pueblo issues and contact. Uh, you look over to the east, Fort Sumner and Bosque Redondo Memorial, arguably one of our most difficult sites of contested space, uh, America's concentration camp. Dropping down, looking at Fort Stanton and Lincoln, U.S. expansion, the issues of water, class, culture, those things related to the Lincoln County Wars. And then down to the bottom, sort of that departure tip on Camino Real, uh, at Fort Selden, which was abandoned, but still have the remnants of it there. And then our newest family member, long time from now, uh, after J. Paul Taylor, who just turned 100 years old, he and his family bequeathed it to us, the Taylor Messiah Historic Property. So we have a lot of coverage across the great state of New Mexico. And while there are many, many programs and educational activities that each of you could probably come and connect to, right now we're looking at a lot of virtual activities. So we've got uh, great opportunities that have come out of this. Each one of our sites has an instructional coordinator as well as interpretive staff that are on the ground. And if we'll go to the next site, we really look at COVID as one of those uh, trying times for all of us. It's been pretty much a curse across the board, but in some ways it's a blessing. One of the things we've really tried to do with historic sites is how do we connect all our sites to make everything come together? It doesn't matter which site you go to, you can learn about those stories. And while we have this downtime, all of our instructional coordinators, our rangers, we're working in tandem to create new immersive opportunities that would come together, a cohesive narrative to create an understanding and meeting for all the Mexicans or people coming from the outside. We never really had a time to integrate this fully until COVID. And now we've done it, it's been fantastic in some ways, just what we happened. If we go to the next slide, we've created more than 25 virtual classroom programs. And these virtual classroom programs, you can go to our website, which you can see up at the top. You can download them, you can go to them, and they're all created around Common Core curriculum standards from the state. Each one of them have age-based curriculum and activities. And we have video connection and resources that we've designed directly for people. And it's remarkable the way both teachers, visitors, young people, as well as just interested parties have discovered these and have really taken advantage of it. 
But after we were done creating these, knowing there was definitely a need for teachers to do something remotely, we thought we can go another step forward. And we go to the next slide. During the summer, our staff really, really leapt into this opportunity. We've hired some of the very best and the brightest over the last four years, and it's really come to fruition. As you can see from this, just a quick screenshot of our virtual summer camp programs, dozens of these that we've put together across. And if we go to the next slide, one of the programs that uh, I've sort of highlighted here, just picking up, is how do we make paper with the Perry's Agave plant? And each one of these programs focuses on heritage, art, class, culture, all reflected inside of this and ties together with those standards. So there's a lot of opportunities here. And if you discover that there are some resources, our instructional coordinators are indeed on the ground right now. We're small staff, so everybody is working there. But if you need program support and assistance, they're available. And if we go to the last one, just as historic sites, we have a lot of ongoing virtual programs. We can't wait until you all come back. Um, do reach out to us. We put everybody's name down, but there's so many of our staff that it would just become overwhelming. But until then, find us on social media, find us on the website, and we're here available for you. So thanks so much. And I think Aurelia is also on mute. Aurelia. Aurelia, you need Aurelia. to unmute. Hi, sorry about that. Um, thanks so much, everybody. So everybody stay tuned and we'll have a meeting where we can have a, a Q and A. Thank you again. I love your dog, Aurelia. <laughs>